Hello guys, in today's demo let me show you how to create a simple playable ad from a video. So what I currently have is a, a short video of a game that let me just play it to you. It's a very simple video, I actually downloaded from YouTube, that is from Monopoly Go. Uh, now what I will do with here is I will click video editor and I will upload my file here. Uh, or I can actually just drag and drop it here. Now, if the video would be too large, I would be prompted to do a compression, which our tool can do for you as well. In this case, my video is completely fine. So this is how the editor looks like when you start building things. What I would like to do next is uh, show you three types of breaks that you use or utilize in uh, uh, playable ads that are created from videos. So. First thing first, let me create a permanent overlay. Permanent overlay is something that you can select from where to begin and where to end. Usually it's uh, used for two things. One can be things like uh, simple music in the background that you want to be present all the time. You can select how many times you want it to be repeating, the volume of it and all that stuff. Same as this, I would like to have, uh, let's call it a simple logo presented as well during the whole time. So let me choose this one. And as you can see, I want this logo to be permanently pre present uh, during the whole gameplay. And now uh, what do you do with each asset that you upload? No matter if it's an image, if it's, a, uh, if it's a, any kind of different, if it's a logo, if it's a clickable hand, you always use this right panel to customize more actions for each asset. So in this case, I have got this logo PNG uploaded. And I want to do be visible both on portrait and landscape. You can switch it here and you know change the position again. But let's say for sake of this demo, I will be doing only one, uh, like only portrait uh, primarily. And let me choose an action. I can resume video. So if this would be another type of break, which we call break uh, overlay, which we call break, yeah, I would use this one. But for this sake, I wanna if accidentally or intentionally user clicks on this logo it will be opening my store URLs. Uh, now the position, of course, you don't have to set that because you can just drag and drop it. You can make it large or small. So for example, I want to make it a little bit smaller. Okay. If you want to, you can use any kind of animations that we have for images in video editor, it's position, scale and transparency. So let's say I, if you want it to be blinking like this, I would leave it uh, scale animation on. Scale factor, you can customize like how much big and small it should be going, how fast it should be going. So I want to lower the duration a little bit so it's slow, so small, or slower. Uh, okay, that's fine. Now, I have permanent overlay, which when is present all the time, the music is playing, the logo is shown. Now I want to add another type of layer that is called a break. Now, because this is a video, I want the user to have a feeling that he's actually uh, triggering something or, you know, triggering a button that is presented uh, on, the, on the video overlay. For this, I will add a break. I will select when it should be happening. In this case, the first break is, is right on the beginning. I want this hand to be smaller like this. And it will be pointing to this go button because that the, you, but that's what the user will be thinking that he's actually going, going to click and let us uh, turn on transparency animation for that hand. Now, what it will be doing that this whole asset, uh, this whole clickable hand, this rectangle, will be performing action resuming video. Now, to make it much more simple for the user and make the clickable space larger, I will also use this kind of transparent overlay, transparent uh, square, which I will place on top of the button that is originally in the video, so it's not uh, being uploaded here. And again, have same action, resume video. If I play it now, wait for my action and continues. With this in mind, I want to create three more actions because my original video have actually a couple of more that I would like to choose from. So let us duplicate the same overlay uh, and let us find the right time. I think it was around 4,000, but let me check show preview. It should be somewhere here. Right, so let us continue. So the, the time that I was looking at was uh, 4,018. Same place, the button doesn't go away because it's still on the same place in the video. And let me 
duplicate this overlay one more time for the third interaction, which will be 8243. Uh, again, at this time, and now I've got three breaks, three, three basic interactions that where user will be uh, driven to click the go button, the dice are rolled in this case, and the game continues. I want to create one more overlay, which is called the end screen. The end screen is like an end card where you usually show some sort of logo, some sort of uh, animations, or, or most importantly, a call to actions, right? So it's almost in the end. So let's let's assume it's around 1200, uh, 12,000. And let me put basic things there, like uh, this kind of an image. I can make it larger. I can, I will even make it, I will add the scale animation for it. The image itself will be opening store URLs, but let us do, let us add the button as well. So a simple button uh with clickable hands on it again i will make the hands smaller and uh both the hand both the image and both the button i have got set action as open store urls now of course i can go to a button and make that i don't know a transparency animation of course now it's all blinking and doing all the stuff that you would not usually do but for the sake of the demo this is perfect and now let's go to the general properties. So uh, let's name our playable, which is uh, Monopoly Go. Why? Technically, it's not that important, but when you are then later trying to find something in Playable Maker in your recent builds in your history, you know, go for right naming so you can easily find it. Uh, enter store URLs if you have them, but of course, would be unwise to publish a playable ad without the ads. You would potentially even not uh, be able to publish it in general. But if you have only iOS or only Android, that's fine. Like use the one that you have, or you can use the, our search bar to, to have a look. Uh, same goes for video background type. So this since the background, since the original file is a video and not some sort of game, there might be on different resolutions, some sort of empty space. So for example, if I choose colors, then the black screens around my video would be on the color that I want it to be. I can choose a video which is playing the exact video that I was showing you before. And I can use both, as you can see, some color and a video. Or you can use an image. Uh, and it can be uh, something like, um, like this. So there's a static image on the empty screen that, I'm, that I have around the around the video. Uh, now let me switch this back to back to video. And what would you do next is that you would check two things. One is the estimated size, which currently is fine for playable ads. It should be around five megabytes. If this would be overreaching this kind of threshold, don't worry. Anytime you click build ad, you will see uh, the estimated size. And if it's too large, we will prompt you to compress one of these, uh, one of the assets that you have. No need to go to third party tools. You can just select whichever you would like to compress. Let's say just the first one. Compress it in a couple of seconds. I have spared more megabytes. Now the playable is even more optimized, but you, you didn't have to do it. Again, same goes for the ad network. So I can choose for which I would actually be building. I want to build for all of those. Start build. And in a minute, I would have a playable ad ready that I will download. It will contain all the packages for each of the ad networks that I selected. And now it's up to me to open each of the ad networks and start uh, building my campaigns and use this as, um, as assets. Uh, I want to show you just two more things after the build is uh, done. So what happens after you build something? A, it's stored in your history. So it's very easy for you to, uh, to find it later. And B, you can always uh, use this kind of shared preview. So if you have a friend, if you have somebody to share your playable with, your colleague, he doesn't have to register. To he don't need to register to a system. He can use it on his mobile, on his other devices, and the playable out. That's it. He will give you some feedback and 
And again, if you need to do something to it, let's say some A-B testing, you will just find it in your recent uh, build, open it, click to any overlay. Let's say I'm not happy with this button. I want to do the A-B test where the button is different one or is in different position, it's a different scale or it's doing something else. What I will do is just uh, either delete the button and multiply the new one or just change it again, your own or from our own library. Now the button is changed. I can build again and the process continues. Thank you guys and stay tuned. See you later.